Hi guys, it's Rob Lester here from Lester Bathrooms. Thank you for taking the time to check out our channel where we're all about bathrooms. Give us a like and subscribe if you please can, but don't worry about it. I've covered this before on our channel, how to put in a shower tray, but it was a long time ago and because of constraints and time sort of arrangements on that job, I couldn't do it the sort of normal arrangement that I'd like to do it. Bear in mind, the tanking waterproofing has already been done and the hardy backer floor is down. That's the way I like to do all of my trays now, always with a hardy backer board on the floor. I'll talk about that in another video and how to show you how to install it. The membrane is here, how to do that. So we've got our 900 by 900 tray here. What I would say is always check the instructions that they give you with the tray. For instance, this, this is recommending a sand and cement mix of five to one, so I'll adhere to that. But just a few minor tweaks, which I'll show you in a bit. So okay, with that in mind, let's get on with the video. Okay, so we've done a bit of work to get to this stage. We've got our showering area all waterproof with a waterproof membrane. I'll put a link to that here because I've done a how-to video earlier to show everyone how to do this. And we've also got our hardy backer cement board down on our existing substrate that's under there. I'll put a link to that. Um, I'll get around to doing that at some point. I'll pop a link on this video. We've also got our waste in place. Um, that's all subfloor, all thoroughly tested before the floor went down. So that's all in position. So now I'm just gonna lay the tray in place and just make sure where our high spots are. Just make sure our trap is nice and centered so we don't have to do any alteration to that. We, we want to do that before the sand and cement's down. So I'll go and do that now and I'm going to mark a little line out for, for where I need to seal to put my SBR sealer. I like to seal this hardy backer board with SBR sealer to take off any dust while we've been working in here, a little bit of dust on here. So I'll seal all this area up. So we'll do that now. Just going to dry fit the tray at this stage just to see that everything fits nicely. I'll also draw around the tray so I know where to seal and where to put our sand and cement. I'll check the waste, all lines up, fantastic, and then. Also what I'll do, I'll put a spirit level on it at this stage just to see where our high spots are. That's pretty level already. I'm going to go across the corner. It needs to come up at this front a little bit. And the same with there. Let's go across this way. Okay. So what the floor is telling me is, it's very level across here and it's a little bit out of level front to back that way. So when we put our sand and cement down, we know where to build a higher spot and just feather that through. Okay, we'll take this tray out and then we'll seal the floor. Let's take a look at our tray over here. This is the back of our tray. It's all absolutely fine. Sometimes this will be sort of exposed stone, which can get very dusty. But on this occasion, I won't seal that, but I will give it a good wipe over with a heavy duty wipe and dry it just to make sure it's keyed up nicely. What I also like to do before I put down the bed of sand and cement is just put a level over the back of the tray to see what sort of depth internally I need. So you can see the fins of the tray here. There's about a five or 10 mil clearance before I actually hit them. And that just gives me an indication of how much sand and cement I need to put on the floor before it actually makes contact with the tray, so I need to go above and beyond that. So once we've got to that stage, our floor is primed, our tray base is nice and clean, 
we've had a look at the situation of the waste is fine, we know where our high spots are in the floor, now we need to just go and knock up our sand and cement. Okay cool, so we've got our big bucket of sand and cement mixed to a 5 and 1 ratio as stipulated on the instructions for this tray. And I know how this floor tips, so it's higher at the back than the front, so I need a bit of a deeper section at the back to the front. So what I like to do, as I mentioned in the last video, is slightly overbuild what I need, because then I like to bed the tray down and give me some play to get it level as much as possible. So we'll get this down. So now we're confident we've got our bed of sand and cement down, that's where our tray needs to be. We can work a little bit on the waste. So we get our box of goodies and we'll start applying some sealant to these sections. First things first is a good idea is to get some heavy duty wipes and clean this bottom bit of the, the waste. Take a wipe. Just make sure it's completely dust free and there's no nasty little bits on there and then dry that off with a bit of tissue. And I just give our rubber washer a nice clean as well. Put a nice bit of sealant around the waste. Put that in one continuous bead. And then we take our rubber washer, position that on top. At this point I tend to clean off any excess from around there. And then once we've done that, I'll put another amount on the top of that rubber just to catch the underside of the tray. One continuous bead. Once we're at that stage, we can offer our tray. Before you put your tray in, be sure to peel back and clear off all of the plastic that will come in contact with the walls. So go around and Clear all these bits off the edges and leave it in the middle, it's absolutely fine. Okay, let's get the tray in. I'd recommend lifting it over into the back corner first and then easing it down on the rest of it. As much as you can, just try and not disturb the cement. Okay, and as we see, that's more than enough under there. Let me give you a little close up if I can. That is bedded on top of that nicely. So when I push that down and level that up, that will be in the perfect spot. I know then I put more than enough sand and cement down onto that tray to make ensure I get a good bed. So I will get the level on it and just make sure we're all okay. Pretty, pretty close. Check it this way. Needs a bit in this corner. Let's check along here. Now you're confident you've got the tray in and you've got it level, go ahead and just check all aspects of it across the back, across the front, across this side, across this side. And that was our problem area, but that's all come out nicely. And then 
also across the diagonals like that. There we go, perfect. Well worth taking the time, however long it takes to just get that tray level, makes your life so much easier when you're installing the tiles and the screen. Okay, trays in, bedded in, nice and level. Next job, let's sort out the waste. So now we take the top part of our waste and I always put a little bit of silicon sealant around this bit. They do supply it with a washer, but in my experience, the washers are very thin. They squeeze out and they look unsightly. Whereas I trust this to give me a nice watertight bond. This is a Dow Corning sealant that we use. So it's all mold, mildew, bacteria free. So you get a nice bit of sealant around there. And then we can get that in and locate that and tighten that up from the top. Okay, finish pinching that up by hand using the little internal lugs. Sometimes you get lugs on the top, which you can use as well. And once it won't go anymore, I'll show you a little tip how I like to just pinch up an extra little bit more. What I like to do is get a couple of wide chisels push those onto the, locate those onto the lug in the direction that you want to take it and you can just push them against each other to get an extra little bit of turn. Let me just see if I can zoom in on that for you. So there's our lugs. So one way I'm going to go this way, the other way I'm going to go that way. So just to give an extra little turn and I wouldn't go too mad because the washer and the sealant will hold everything. That's just something I like to do to add a little bit of extra pinch there and then we can start cleaning that up. Okay, one of the last things to do now is to put our trap in top plate with the seal, sits in top and then you're left with your finished chrome plate which I wouldn't put on now if you still got all the tiling to do put it on last thing because if it gets trodden on or something dropped on it it will crack and it will damage it and scratch so just for illustration purposes that goes on there so there we go. The next thing I like to do is put a bead of silicone around the outside now because I want to tile tomorrow so I want all that sealant to be nice and dry so I'll get a wet wipe and do that. It's all nice and dust free with a wipe. Give that a dry. You can pop your sealant around. I like to use a clear translucent down corning so I'll throw that round making sure you nicely fill in the joint. Okay, so that's all sealed up now. One last little job. So the last thing I like to do is just protect the tray. I've got a couple of bath towels from home. These are what we use to protect our trays with. No point going to all this effort if you're not going to protect the tray and damage it. So leave the plastic in there and just get a couple of nice durable towels or a clean dust sheet. I use a duvet for our baths that we put in. And just leave that like that. Good. So there we go, that's our tray in, sealed, ready to tile tomorrow. I hope that's been informative. Do give us a like and subscribe if you can. That would be great. I know we've covered this before, but I just wanted to do it again for you just to show a slightly different arrangement that we've got here. So 
Okay guys, check out our channel for more how-to content and makeover videos. This on suit will be one of them and we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.